cobblestones, square circles, and laughs. The Road of Savat. Professor Butron embarks on a journey across France to interview the living professors of Savat in 2012. This documentary captures the history of the French martial arts as told to you directly from each professor. Those who train in the noble art of French foot fighting Savat understand that the professors propel the spirit of pugilism. Enjoy the vast knowledge that's being propelled within the documentary. Savat's history, subculture, its traditions have been passed on orally by its professors and higher ranks within the style. Even though books have been written, it's usually only about its methods of fighting. Enjoy The Road of Savat as told by its professors. Donc on m'appelait la panthère rose en boxant. Et... Moi j'ai aussi la même intégrale rose en junior la même année parce qu'on est tous les deux les premiers tireurs pour le bélier association. Voilà. Et la première intégrale effectivement elle était rose. Avec les un gens, bélier dans le dos. Je crois. Les gens riaient bien quand ils nous voyaient arriver sur le ring. Sur le ring, ouais, c'était ça. Ouais. Mais bon on arrivait quand même à gagner. Ouais. Et je sais pas pourquoi Hervé avait choisi cette couleur. Honnêtement, ouais, peut-être, peut je sais pas, a... c'est vrai que moi j'avais été un peu surpris quand il nous a amené euh, ce, ce genre de... Après j'aimais mieux l'autre, c'était comme... vert, on a eu vert et bleu, et on a été les premiers à être sponsorisés. On avait le euh, franc prix, je m'en rappelle, qui était marqué sur le... Sur la non, combi... Oui, il y avait Gosport, mais il y avait franc prix, moi j'avais franc prix, j'avais un, un truc de... Avec Franck Prix. Voilà. Hello, my name is Professor Buitron better known in the Savat circles as uh, Popeye, or Professor Popeye. I started Savat at the age of six. Now it's 39 years ago. The reason I started Savat was that at the age of six, I was beaten up by four kids in the playground. The next day my dad takes me to my uncle and he starts teaching me an art that's similar to Savat, known as Sipota. Sipote is an old word, Basque word for shoe, just like Savadis. Is it a literal translation? Probably. Um, as time progressed, we, I changed and we did uh, moved out of Laredo and we, I was involved in other martial arts. 
but I always came back to my uncle, and I always learned from him, and I always accepted the techniques that he was giving me, because those techniques were those techniques of reality. And later on, right before I, I finished high school, at the age of 16, I moved to Dallas, and in that time frame, a cousin of mine, who was also taught by my uncle, who is deceased now, his name is Jesse Chapa Jr., uh, told me, Sipota is Sabat. You should go look for it in Dallas. Well, I did just that. I found Aikido, which I love the, the martial art. I found Shaolin Kung Fu, which I'm ranked in. I got involved with uh, Kempo, and there was no Sabat. I found Tai Chi, Ching Yi, Bagua. I found uh, many other sorts. Swai Jiao, I found a martial art from... Uh, Shorinji Kempo, but no Sabat whatsoever. As time progressed, it was a Christmas and my cousin was in town. And uh, he said, a friend of mine that, that was with me in the Marines, his name is Perry King, he trained with a Sabat, Sabat tour back in Los Angeles. Well, we contacted Perry, and Perry told me that he had studied from a man by the name of Daniel Doobie back in 1986 and that Daniel Doobie had moved back to France. Well, <clears throat> we started conversing back and forth, talking about the techniques. We started coming down to Laredo. My uncle used to teach us and teach us certain kick techniques, certain movements, certain ways of defending yourself against a kick and a punch from Cipota. And this friendship developed. And so we all went to California. And that's where I met my professor, Robert Paturel. And I also met uh, my brothers in the art, who later became my trainer, Richard Sila, Dominic Daclovi, Pascal Mazur, Pascal Duco. They came down to give a seminar. And they gave us an exam of different categories to see what levels we were. That was the first time we found out that there was a ranking system of someone or better known, Savat Book Francis, what we now call Contemporary Savat. And Contemporary Savat will be the elements of Book Francis Savat taught to the different countries and those just taking off and growing by themselves. It's not really the pedagogy of Book Francis Savat, the combative ring. It's just seeds that were planted and those seeds, seeds have blossomed into a type of fighting that built more of assumptions and of than of actual teaching. Well, nonetheless, I have to express myself because there's an incident in that time that has never left my memory. And it was my professor, Paturet. And you have to imagine this. You had all these illuminaries, all these masters of martial arts of the Jeet Kune Do arena that that fraternity that, that evolves, you know, you have people that were teaching and all these masters of the martial arts were there to see my professor and to see him teach. Well, in the final day, he told everybody, put your gloves on because I'm going to do, I'm going to spark each and every one of you. I was 30 people. And he went one after one. And it's just, it's just uh, that time, I'm going I'm to talk about a certain piece. He was, uh, was up against this world champion of uh, shoot boxing at the time. Phenomenal the fighter, phenomenal gentleman. And, you know, just like a, a student watching his professor, you know, I would bob and weave and skeeve and punch just when he was doing the same thing over and over. It was something imaginable. It was, uh, it was poetry in motion. It was a painter painting on this canvas without missing a stroke. And all of a sudden, bam, this lightning bolt strikes without no warning whatsoever. And we were all in awe, and as I looked down to try to see in the commotion of the movement, I lost my, my professor in that motion. In that split second, he did some movement that he disappeared in the air. And he comes behind 
is world champion. Smirking and fighting right behind him, not never missing a beat. It was just incredible. He, uh, my professor had signed his name and signed Savat, the name of Savat, in the history of the martial arts in the United States as a force to be reckoned with. And from then on, he has been my, my professor, and that was, oh, now it's going to be 20, no, 33 years ago, 33, 34 years ago. I was 18 years old at the time, and I'm, I'm 45 right now, so we'll do the math a little bit more than that. Here, Savat in the United States has been an uphill battle. Little didn't know that this is the first school of Savat here in the Laredo, Texas. And it has produced other things in Dallas. From here, it kind of just spread out. Nonetheless, um, we have formed a competitive organization which is not profit, which is USA Savat. And we had tremendous athletes. We had great champions in USA Savat. They fought both internationally and nationally. And when the wars came of Iraq and Afghanistan, we lost a vast majority of the clubs because most of the clubs were military bases. So we lost competitors. So since 2005 to the present, now in 2013, there has not been any competitions of somebody here, officially. So that competitor was lost. People do not know what Savat is unless you're a seasoned martial artist and you've heard of it, or if you come from the Jeet Kune Do realm and you heard that Bruce Lee trained in Savat, then you can, you've heard of the word. Um, right now, there's not that many children in Savat. We have 13 in my school, and those are the only youth that practice Savat in the United States. Many ask, so how did you get to France? Well, that was my senior year when I was in school at the time. And I was about to graduate, and I received a letter, you know, from Patorel and the French Federation. They had, they had given me a scholarship for me to go train over there. And we, just, and we answered back and forth, and we answered yes, and I left to France. And I was over there for three seasons. I was, I was 20 years old when, when I was 23. In Savat, in France, or Boxe in France, I saw many, many legends. Met many, many professors. I saw many fights. I the competitors that we met, the different clubs that I visited, that I was privileged of seeing. The professors that are no longer with us, that have passed away. It's uh, it's a time frame that that was very that was forging. And uh, in that forging of Savant, or for that element that was in, in here, I consider myself a seed that, that had been planted and was planted. And I see that seed just barely starting to bloom here in the United States. It's been a while. Um, when I was in France, I was a monitor of Savant, of, 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 and I was in charge of ISPTT in Chadron. And in Chadron, uh, you know, there was uh, Richard Thomas, which later on was my sparring partner in INSEP. INSEP was a national training institute where the French team was at. Not only the French team of Boxing and Savat, but the French team of boxing, wrestling, swimming. It was just, uh, you know, all the Olympic Olympians, if you can say that, even though Savat is, uh, Boxing and Savat is not an Olympic sport, all the Olympians were there training. And in that team that was there, our trainer was Professor Richard Seeley, or world champion Richard Seeley. And he used to, he would teach us at Ring Savvy. I mean, I remember uh, professors now, Ivan Barbaja, Jean-Louis Lassen, Tony Moreno, Richard Thomas, Alan Sankifo, Camille Sharif, Stephen Gugno, uh, Jean-Baptiste Auga, Kaklecki had just left the first thing, Farina and Pinocchio had just left the season before, but we knew each other because that's where we had come from. It was an acceptance. Every day you were with them, every day you punched and kicked each other, and you formed a bond. That was the band of brothers. It, it continues until today. I mean, we live 
in different countries we follow each other's works we help each other out when we have to it's a bond that said development of somebody and that's that fraternity that fellowship that draws many to this motion uh, many questions what is Savat? why Savat? well Savat is in a fighting system but more or less it's a fighting fighting philosophy Savat is old uh, the first school was in 1803 and it has passed on to hands and it had, in 1840 it was already around the world you had clubs or schools of box Frances in picking China in the Philippines in uh, the Maurice Islands Mexico the United States uh, Brazil it was it already in 1840 it had already gone around the world before even karate was even apparently invented by Funakoshi, which is other stories. But um, what does Savat teach you? Well, number one, Savat teaches you how to conquer your own fears. In the realm of Savat, every Savatur is special. A colored glove to a silver glove, monitor and monitor professor. Each one is special and unique to Savat. Each one needs its importance. And from that importance, we all build together and build strongly for Savat to go forward. It has a rich tradition. It has rich techniques, proving itself widely time and time again. Uh, but right now, it's a time for everybody to fuse into one general path to go forward. Again, thank you.